not right to do that. Let them know that you are not part of it. Let them know that you cannot be part of those things. You are a child of God. And therefore, what? when it is not of God, you can't be part of it. Praise the Lord. So expose them. Expose them. So the responsibility of the man in the book of Proverbs 18, 22, the Bible says, Whoso findeth a wife has found a good thing and obtained favor. Whoso finds a wife has found a good thing. And so your wife is a good thing. This is the first one, the number one thing I want you to register in the minds of every husband. Your wife is a good thing. He so whoever finds a wife has found a good thing. If you find a wife, you have found a good thing. You didn't find problems, you didn't find bedding, you didn't find uh, the devil you have found a good thing you have found a good thing you have found a good thing so my wife is a good thing to me my wife is a blessing unto me my wife is an addition to my life he is not she is not a minus my wife is a plus unto me my wife is a god sent woman into my life glory be to jesus Amen. glory be to jesus Amen. and so when you understand these things then you wouldn't have any problem start, I mean, taking up your responsibility as a husband. So you must understand, because if you don't understand, in the book of Psalm 49, verse 20, the Bible says, Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perish. And remember, the Bible says, He that finds a wife has found a good thing and obtained favor, obtained favor. Obtained favor. So it means that when you get married, you are honored. But here the Bible says in the book of Psalm 49, verse 20, that man that is in honor, the man that has been honored and does not understand, is like a beast that perish. He is married, it is honor, but he doesn't understand it. So he is like a beast that perish. You won't be that person in Jesus' name. Amen. There is no such person here like that in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. And so Ephesians 5.25, the Bible says, Husbands, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Love your wife, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Love your wife, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So God gave this commandment to all husbands. All husbands. And you have to understand that it is not an admonition. It is not a suggestion. But an instruction that must be obeyed. An instruction that must be obeyed. Men, love your wife. It's an instruction. It's a commandment from God that has to be obeyed. So God made it mandatory for every husband to love their wives sacrificially and unconditionally. Glory be to Jesus. So this is it. If it is a commandment, then unto you love your wife as Christ loved the church. You are not walking in agreement with the word of God. It's as simple as that. Until you love your wife as Christ loved the church, you are not walking in agreement with the word of God. And if you are not walking in agreement with the word of God, it means you are not walking with God because God is the word and the word is God. And Amos 3, 3 says, how can two walk together except they agree? So in your marriage, God cannot be part of it until you are agreeing with God on the basis of his word. You want God to be part of the home. It is not 40 day fasting. It is not prophetic declaration on your life. It is you agreeing with God's word in your marriage, delightfully obeying God's word by loving your wife unconditionally and sacrificially. Because the instruction is that love your wife even as Christ loved the church. And until you are doing that, you are not agreeing with God. And until you agree with God, you can't walk with him because the Bible says, how can two walk together? unless they agree. So if you are not agreeing with God, and then it means you are not working with him. And if you are not working with him, you know the one that will come and work with you. He doesn't need permission to come. He is not a gentleman. He always forces himself into people's life. 
So the reason, this explains why we have a lot of chaos in Christian marriage. Because they are in the church, but they are not agreeing with God. They are not working with God when it comes to their marriage. Because they are still hooked on to tradition that is from idol worshipping to cultures that has nothing to do with God's word. But we are delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are delivered in the name of Jesus. We are delivered in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so love your wife as Christ loved the church. And so quickly I want us to consider how Christ loved the church. Because I think we see the, the description of love in the book of our First Corinthians 13, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's, let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. Maybe let's take it from verse 3. 1 Corinthians 13 and uh, from verse number 3. Uh, and though I bestow all my goods to feed, the, to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have charity, and have no charity, it profited me nothing. For Charity suffered long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity vendors not itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemingly. Seek not her his I mean her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh not evil. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. Charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Praise the Lord. And so let's look at, on the basis of this scripture, let us consider how Jesus loved the church and how he expect we, the husbands, to love our wife. In the first place, he's talking about patience and kindness. Patience and kindness. And so we see that Jesus was, was the epitome of patience. I mean, if you look at Jesus' life, he had many reasons to be mad at people. But he was so patient with his disciples. He could tolerate them. He could accommodate them. He could endure them. I mean, uh, if he, he, he could have been mad at them for a lot of things they did. A lot of things they did. Now, you have to know that it takes the heart of patience to deal with the likes of Thomas the doubter, Judas the thief, and, and Peter the disappointed friend. <laughs> you see, but Jesus was able to accommodate all these people. He was able to endure them. He was able to tolerate them. And now he's telling with the husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. You know, there are a lot of things that try our patience. But if we will allow Christ to, to, to live and reign in our heart, then we will be able to love our wives as he loved the church. And listen to me, this message is for the believers, the people that are determined to walk with God. Because any unbeliever that hears this message will be mad. You know why he will be mad? He doesn't have the understanding. He can never agree to the fact that I have to love my wife sacrificially no matter what she does. No way. That is nonsense to him. So this message is not for unbelievers. It is for believers. It is for those that are born again, but they don't know how to succeed in marriage. They don't know how to bring the peace of God into their home. So we see patience and kindness in Jesus' life. And that is one of the characteristics of, of love. And, and uh, we, we, we also see uh, Jesus, you know, loving them unconditionally, no matter what they did to him. So we husbands are expected, according to God's word, to love our wives the way Jesus loved the church. Patience. Now, can, can you imagine Jesus having to repeat this over and over and over and still the disciples could not catch it. They couldn't get it. Yet he was patient with them.